Landboards presents Differential Scope Probe Part 2. In Part 1 we built a differential scope probe and got it basically functioning. In this part of the video we'll try to figure out what the performance looks like and if there's any issues that need to be fixed. Uh, this would be a good point to note the limitations of our test equipment. We're using a Rigel DS1054Z which is a 50 megahertz bandwidth oscilloscope. So when our oscilloscope shows a 7 nanosecond rise time, in fact, it's probably much quicker than that. Our signal generator is an inexpensive DDS dual channel generator that we bought on eBay for about $60. One possibly weak link in the chain here is the very cheap coax I bought on eBay. In comparison, an Elcom cable is about three times the price. Let's take a moment to take a look at what we've done for cabling. It's a standard practice to use banana jack connectors for the input. For the input jacks, we're using alligator clip to banana jacks. We've chosen good quality silicone wire. Although the power could either come from a 9 volt battery or from a wall wart, for the moment we've chosen a 2.1 millimeter wall wart connector. We're using an inexpensive eBay wall wart 9 volt 1 amp, although the 1 amps is overkill. The output connector is a BNC, a quality part made by Enfinol. A BNC to BNC cable connects between the card and the scope. And this is the entire set of the pieces. Let's see if we can characterize the output of the signal generator. Let's look carefully at the signal generator output at about 1 MHz. The signal generator output rise time is around 12 nanoseconds. And the signal generator fall time is about the same at 12 or 13 nanoseconds. Now let's start to look at the outputs from the differential probe. Here's the effect of the input AC coupling at 15 kilohertz. You can see there's a fair amount of droop. This is the scope noise floor on the one millivolt per division vertical scale. Here's the output of the differential probe, its noise floor on the 20 millivolts per division vertical scale. Here's what a 15 kilohertz sine wave looks like, pretty decent. Here's a 1 megahertz square wave and we see the really big overshoot and undershoot. Here's the overshoot, it looks like it's a little bit longer than 20 nanoseconds. And here's the undershoot, it also looks like it's about 20 nanoseconds. So let's try and attempt to analyze the performance of our implementation of the device. Let's look more closely at the over and undershoot. First some observations. Let's look at how one volt in level of input signal, what it produces for an output. Note the output is about one volt. When the input voltage is two volts, then the output voltage also is two volts. However, when the input voltage goes above two and a half volts, the output voltage stays at two and a half volts. And when the input voltage goes as high as 10 volts, the output voltage clips at two and a half volts. This is the real, the real nature of the op amps that are used. So since there's only two op amps here, which of the two is causing that? Well, looking at the output of the first op amp, the differential one, uh, the yellow at the top is the output of the card, and the blue below is the output coupling capacitor between the two stages, so it's coming out of the first stage. The simulation doesn't show anything like that overshoot or undershoot, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. Let's take a closer look. This video shows the output with the input being step from one volt up to 20 volts in steps of a tenth of a volt. To try to get a handle on the problem, I decided to look at the data sheet for the op amps. Then I remembered, oops, I didn't buy that op amp. I bought a different op amp. Hmm, I wonder what the differences are between the two parts. Let's look. 
Well, I knew that the part I bought was a 500 megahertz part instead of a 4 gigahertz part, but what other differences are there? Ouch, that was unexpected. The part I purchased lists a 17 nanosecond settling time, and the part in the app note didn't have any listed settling time. Hmm. It looks like part three of this video is not going to be coming anytime soon. I'll have to get some parts on order from DigiGeek. Wow, these parts sure are expensive. No wonder I picked the slightly cheaper, but still expensive part. Thanks for watching our video, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.